What's going on guys? This is the Red Rogue and I hope you're all doing well today. Well, I have some spicy news for you folks today. Being one of the sneakiest of sneaky boys around, I've gotten my hands on the pre-9.1 patch notes for Shadowlands. The job was a bit unorthodox. Alright folks, we're in. Just gotta get through this last door. Roll 397 being a rogue. Never leave home without your lockpicks. Somehow this makes more and less sense than it ought to. Oh. And if I do. <laughs> Nerds. But the results are quite promising. So thank you so much for joining me today. Now let's crack into some leaked patch notes. This video's information will be segmented out using individual color-coded hot sauce bottles from Merloco's Ultra Taco Town, which just so happens to be the first sponsor of the channel. As I'm legally bound and obligated to say, their food will not cause any lasting damage to your ribcage and or esophagus. With that mandatory disclaimer and advertisement funds being transferred to my bank account now, we can begin our dive through patch 9069's notes. Unfortunately, it looks like this is a really preliminary draft, so this might be a somewhat limited scope of what we'll see waiting for us in the future of Shadowlands. First, we'll go over some of the generic game system features, and then we'll get into more specific things. Up first, the introduction of a new format for raiding, Keystone Clears. Due to the immense popularity of Mythic Keystone Dungeons in Shadowlands, we have been looking for ways to expand the potential audience for this rewarding game system. We've wanted to find something that could help enhance and complement one of the founding pillars of World of Warcraft, and have decided to introduce keystone affixes into raids. These will cycle through a variety of combinations, though we wanted to make them feel different than the ones you might be used to from your keystone dungeons. The level of the keystone will directly affect the quality of your loot, and will also change how many affixes you will need to contend with. As an additional note, the entire raid will need to be completed within the time limit, or you won't receive any loot. While this is still a new concept, we have a few affixes we are excited to share with you all and look forward to your feedback when raid testing is made available in the coming weeks. Tree Ranical. Bosses will randomly transform into trees that must be watered and protected from ravenous shredders. For every 20% of health a Tree Ranical boss loses due to the shredders, a large burst of unavoidable raid-wide damage will occur. To water the Tree Ranical boss, numerous orbs of purified water will spawn throughout the encounter area and will need to be brought within range of the boss. The boss will then transform back into their original form after the waves of Ravenous Shredders have been held back so that you may continue the encounter. Forty Fried. Players will be randomly targeted by a large, deep fryer that spews out 40 molten hot french fries. Any player struck by a french fry will in turn become fried, rooting them in place for one minute. A rock salt blaster backpack will be given to a certain number of players in the raid, determined by group size, and they will be able to salt their fried allies. Consuming a salted and fried ally will give a 200% damage increase for the remainder of the encounter, as long as the fried player was consumed within the first 30 seconds of becoming fried. A soggy debuff will be applied to players who remain fried for longer than 30 seconds, and consumption of these players will result in the consumer and consumee instantly dying. Sanguispite Storm Anytime a player takes damage, a Sanguispite Storm tornado will spawn. This will deal damage to any player's hit, and will spawn a Sanguis Spiteful Shade that fixates on only tanks, and any enemy's hit will heal for 300% of the damage the Sanguis Spite Storm Tornado has dealt to players. To stop a Sanguis Spite Storm Tornado, players will need the new Engineer-only Trinket, the Bandage Minigun. Activating this trinket will allow players to trigger a volley of blood-clotting bandages into the tornadoes, absorbing the stored damage. The schematic for the Bandage Minigun is a well-kept secret, and does require being a maximum level engineering in Shadowlands Engineering, as well as all prior expansions. We can't wait to see how quickly our secret finding community can figure this one out. Unfortunately, upon further examination of these patch notes, it seems that most of them are covered in really cheap coffee and stick figure drawings of Bobby Kotick with a gold-plated Ferrari yacht, so we'll have to skip all the store mounts, gear sales, cutting edge achievement purchases, and all that stuff that's going to be made available in the shop, and the mobile app rating being made available too. As always with a large patch, there will be further class tuning and balancing, and thankfully that page mostly survived, 
though in my opinion there seems to be quite a few classes and specs missing from the list. Again, this is very likely an early draft since it's leaked, so as with all my disclaimers, these numbers and information can change prior to launch. Druids. After hearing a large concern from the community regarding the state of the druid class, we've decided to take a long and hard look at the core principles we wanted this hybrid class to embody. Being a hybrid, it was intended to be a jack of all trades, master of none, though it seems our design when combined with the addition of soul binds, conduits, legendaries, and covenant abilities has caused our vision to become skewed. We hope to hear back from the community on our latest revisions for druids as these changes will be made available in the first PTR build. Convoke the Spirits now deals 500% more damage, cannot be interrupted, and is affected by haste rating. A new class-wide cooldown will be introduced to help improve the viability of druids in mythic keystone dungeons. Mighty Muscles of Ursok. 3 minute cooldown. The druid will roar, instilling all allies with the might of Ursok. This will give all players a 10% attack and spell power buff for 1 hour, and increase their haste by 31% for 41 seconds. Now we have some mage changes. While Fire Mages have been performing competitively in Shadowlands so far, the Balance and Design team have both agreed that as a pure DPS class it might need a little bit more attention to bring it up to par with the other classes currently in game. We feel these changes will provide an incentive for players to give Fire Mage an opportunity to excel. A new conduit has been designed to help Combustion feel like a more impactful cooldown. It's super effective. Triggering Combustion while Combustion is active will increase your fire damage dealt by a base value of 105%. This value will scale based on the number of active targets. We also felt the current selection of legendaries for Fire Mage was a bit lacking, so we'll be introducing another one in our next PTR build. This will be earned from completing the first chapter of your Covenant campaign. Why even bother? Combustion no longer has a cooldown. And thankfully I saved the best for last, as there seems to be quite a few pages missing in these class changes or they literally just didn't do any tuning to anything else which wouldn't surprise me either honestly. Rogue changes though, my favorite news when I see patch notes. While rogues are always performing well and offer one of the largest ranges of utility for groups in both dungeons and raids, we have heard some concerns that indicate our player base is not entirely pleased with the current state of rogue. This concern seems to arise from theory crafters, community figures, and even random jerkwads with YouTube channels, so our team has decided to take a closer look into the rogue class as a whole. Flagellation will now be renamed Beat the Crap Out of You with a Whip, due to the amount of times people cannot pronounce or spell it correctly. Outlaw Rogues Outlaw has been known for its cleave and consistent damage sources, though when the specialization was reimagined during Legion, our design intention was to rely on the forces of Fate and Chance. Due to this, the Roll the Bones ability has been reworked, as well as the functionality of some abilities. A new Roll the Bones effect, Incredible Ineptitude, this buff will cause the rogue to receive a 90% reduction to their chance to hit, a 300% damage taken increase, and a 70% movement speed debuff. Combo points cannot be generated or spent during this buff, however if you do successfully hit while Incredible Ineptitude is active, it will deal 9001% extra damage. Blade Flurry. On activation, it will have a 30% chance of decapitating the user, dealing 90% of total health and damage. Killing Spree will make you 99% more likely to be hit by easily avoidable mechanics. Functionality unchanged, tooltip updated to reflect missing information. Acrobatic Strikes is now a baseline passive. This was implemented to offset the 3 yard melee range reduction all melee classes will be receiving in this coming patch. Assassination Rogue With the most recent changes in patch 905 helping bring assassination up in performance noticeably, we feel that we may have over adjusted the specialization somewhat. We will be doing small incremental tuning passes over the coming weeks to bring Assassination more in line with the other two rogue specializations and look forward to your feedback. Elaborate planning has been reworked. You must now complete a Rubik's Cube, jump 14 times in the shape of a pentagon, and remain facing east the entire time for the damage buff to trigger. We felt the current design of elaborate planning did not fit the elaborate nature of the talent and hope that this will change things. Slice and Dice has been a hotly debated topic since its reintroduction in Shadowlands as a class-wide maintenance buff finishing move. Due to the claimed lack of synergy with Assassination, it has been viewed unfavorably. Due to this, we've included another revision to the Slice and Dice ability. Slice and Dice rank 2.5. If Slice and Dice is not currently active, you will lose 20% of your overall damage. You will also lose 5% of your maximum health every second. We feel this will help improve the urgency of keeping Slice and Dice active as much as possible. And lastly, Subtlety Rogues. 
Subtlety's representation in Shadowlands has fluctuated greatly from launch to current day, and the design team has struggled to figure out a cause for this. While the community has not been very vocal on this topic, we strive to make every class and specialization in the game feel strong. This first round of changes will be on the PTR within the coming weeks, and we look forward to hearing your feedback on the forums. All damage reduced by 15%. This effect will be tripled in activities against enemy players. Shadow Dance duration reduced to 4 seconds. Mantle of the Master Assassin is now no longer usable by Subtlety. This first round of tuning should put Subtlety closer to our intended vision for it, though final numbers may fluctuate as we gauge its performance against a pile of moldy bread. Well folks, as you can see even from these scraps of leaked patch notes, there is a lot coming out in Shadowlands soon. So I hope this little bits of information proves useful to you. And also, make sure to do really dumb, arbitrary things that every YouTuber says to do, like punch a like button and uppercut a bell and suplex the comment section and all that other dumb crap. And on a serious note, I hope you guys got a laugh out of the video. It was a lot of just random stuff that I thought I'd put together for this uh, April Fool's Day video, so I hope you got a laugh or two out of it. And as always, my gratitude to you, my viewers, commenters, subscribers, and especially my patrons, who all help make these sheba shenanigans possible. Thank you all so much for watching. This is the Red Rogue, and I'll see you guys around. And buy the tacos. Seriously, it's sponsor money.